Hello there, and welcome back to Carpo's World of Censored Thoughts. Naturally, I would, uh, I started this channel originally several years ago for cannabis. And then YouTube made it difficult to even talk about cannabis. So I decided I'm going to change the channel to Carpo's World of Thoughts. It had a couple intermediate names. But this channel specifically I set up originally for cannabis, but after I couldn't talk about that anymore, uh, I had it, I think, as a Kratom channel for a while. Couldn't talk about that anymore, so I made a Carpo's World of Thoughts and decided, well, I'll just talk about my usual topics on my main channel, and then I'll use this when my main channel is suspended, in which case it is right now. So I, uh, <clears throat> I found it interesting. I, I made a video yesterday talking about a particular subject that I can't even talk about. And it's funny because people self-censor all the time in videos when I hear them talking about they won't even say the V word, which is the shot that people are getting in their arm for this particular pathogen that we're trying to fight. You see, I won't, I won't even use the terms anymore. I've given up. I am self-censoring now to the point where if I really want to even have my voice heard and talk about topics, I can't use those, those words. It's the same way with the, the, the topics of herbs, when I was talking about that special herb with the K name in it, right? Which I already said, I think, a while ago. So it doesn't matter. It's really hard to censor yourself on every single term, and naturally I'm not going to do that. It's kind of a joke, but... <clears throat> when I was talking about the topic yesterday, I was trying to be as neutral as possible. Um, I never said that it was a bad thing to get it. I said that I have neutral, you know, mixed feelings about it, and I probably will eventually, but you never know. Trying to open up a dialogue with something that has to do with public health. And look, I get it. There are many people spreading a lot of misinformation out there. Things that they have no idea what they're talking about. Bringing up these, you know, bunk scientific articles to prove their point. But this goes on both sides. So people are suspicious of the truth. They don't know what to believe. Therefore, the only way to get to the bottom of things is to open up dialogue. Mainstream is totally allowed to talk about these topics because, well, they just assume that they're doing it in a rational, fair way. Even though these people may be biased against something that could be beneficial, um, it's difficult to navigate today's world. It's n not that we are more censored than ever before. It's that we have always been censored. And now people are starting to say more. So let me explain where I'm coming from. Back in the day, if you said the wrong thing about the church or the government, you'd be hanged, burned alive, executed in a lot of places. And today that's still true. Today there are still people with life imprisonment, journalists that are in prison for life in other countries for saying something bad about royalty or the Shah or whoever is in charge. Now, this is... You know, it's difficult to run a society for all of us. And some people have found that that's the way they want to do business. We tried something different in America, and we decided, well, we're going to make it a free society and see how that works out. There are issues, that's for sure. But the freedom of speech, even if it's something we don't want to hear, is something that cannot be infringed, should not be infringed, because it always backfires. So, to get back to you know, my own personal thoughts, I, I consider myself very balanced and fair when I talk about topics. I try to be. But I do have my opinions like everyone else. If my video is being censored and I'm having my channel suspended because I talked about a topic, even though I sent them, a, you know, a dispute of the claim, within an hour they sent me back an automated email, we've reviewed your content and decided we're sorry to inform you, we know it's disappointing, but, and they actually say that, we know it's disappointing, but you, you're you still going to have your, you know, video not just deleted, but have a strike on your channel, which means I can't upload for a period of time. This is how voices are silenced, and if balanced critics are silenced, then I can only imagine how many people out there suffer the same fate that are just unheard. My voice is only heard by, what, a couple hundred people, right? I, it's not like you're going to hear about the thousands of other 
people who had their videos purged because YouTube decided they didn't want anybody talking about it unless they were mainstream media. This is how the left starts to sympathize with uh, those who despise the media, those who despise Google and these companies who, even though we use the product of YouTube, decide that they can decide what we can say and what we can't say. I'm telling you right now, it's going to backfire. It's going to be a problem for society if this keeps up. However, there's part of me that also realizes there's guys like Alex Jones out there who spout hate and actually cause real world problems because of claiming things are fake and then parents are getting death threats and saying that they're fake actors because their kids died. Can you imagine the feeling you would have if you went through that? Of course you'd be angry at a guy like that and of course you'd want censorship from a guy like that. But by doing that, you're throwing everyone else under the bus along with him. People like myself. So, it is what it is, as they say, right? Fortunately, I have another channel that I can talk on with my friends here. If I were to get shut down from YouTube completely, I'd, you know, lose my audience, but fortunately I still have a podcast, and the podcast I can talk about whatever the hell I want, and I do. So that's where I talk about topics like government and police brutality or herbs, various things. Um, once you start talking about these topics on YouTube, you get censored, you get shut down, you have your channel harassed, and it's really sad that we're at that point in history, and it's shameful, you know? That they don't take more time to review the content that they're claiming is, you know, against guidelines. But anyhow, uh, no, I'm not going to whine about myself the whole time. I wanted to say that uh, <clears throat> this is happening to so many people out there. And when you have your voice silenced, it makes people angry. So whether they're left or right wing polit politically, whether they're religious or atheist, if you can't talk about a particular topic for fear of censorship, it makes people, um, let's just say, it doesn't make them very fond of social media, nor the people who run it. I think that the future of the internet is going to reveal that it's going to be more of a chaotic place. They're trying to make it more of a consolidated place. They want to dominate. They want to be able to hold... Um, <laughs> Nobody's held accountable, so it's, it's the Wild West out there, it always was. But it's funny, when I used to think about the early days of the internet, I thought that of then as the Wild West, that back then things were chaotic and now things are actually starting to balance out. And in some ways this is true. You know, we've got rid of a lot of trolls and people wasting others' time, but then there's an, a part of that that everyone misses, right? the stupid short videos of cats and the trolls and the haters. There's a culture on the internet that you can't get away from by trying to hide it. And when you try to hide people's voices, you know, even though the opinion not, might not be something you like, um, it's not going to ever help. It never has been shown to solve anything. It only makes people more angry and they dig in and they have more resolve. So I'm hoping that people can get their heads out of their asses when it comes to supporting this kind of thing by saying, well, yeah, we shouldn't have to hear them. In other words, I'm sitting here saying I feel like I was wrong in many ways in the past, the way I was thinking about the solutions. I'm growing, too, and I'm learning, too. In other words, I think Alex Jones, a guy like that, should have his YouTube channel back. I do. I think that uh, you never should have shut down Parler the website, even though they, people talk about hate, and they talk about anti, you know, I don't even want to say the word, the propaganda against certain people who of, of dissent of a certain <laughs> Judaism. Uh, how do you even talk about topics when you can't say them without having your shit deleted? It's crazy. And um, so you have to take the good with the bad, and you have to be able to allow people to speak, or else that will boil over into other parts of society, and that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing the repercussions of people feeling silenced. If people feel their leaders are not listening to them, which they never are, then all they can do is speak out themselves 
and people started getting really good at speaking out together in groups. And I realized that a lot of hate groups, if you want to call them that, or groups that are, you know, very strongly worded and opposed, militia-type organizations that people feel are scary, scary, look, you have to be able to deal with that. They're not going away. Put it this way, wouldn't you rather have people who are hateful and angry out in the open, in the public forum, than hiding in some dark corner of the internet where they can go undetected, go on the dark web, talk about whatever they want. Just think about it, you know? Silencing people never worked. And uh, that's not just on my behalf, because I know how to work my way around things, and, you know... On a side note, I, yeah, I even have a separate channel for drug talks, because I'm afraid of YouTube harassing me. It's a... <clears throat> it's a strange world. Even people who have harm reduction channels get, get harassed. But if there's enough ad revenue for Google and, you know, YouTube, they don't really say much. You know? They claim that they want disclaimers and they want people safe, but they don't tell you what they are. There's no clear rules, and there never have been. And that's what I mean about it being the Wild West now more than it ever was. Now it's the Wild West for creators or people who want to utilize it. So, uh, I'm... Curious to know all of your, your thoughts on it. Obviously, I will be using this channel for a bit, and be sure to check out the podcast as well. It's called 15 Minute Free Thinking, and uh, I have about 29 episodes, 30 episodes on there right now. So, you know, a good background to check out. It's on all the podcast platforms. Just look it up, and I'll talk to you next time. Be well. Peace.